Hello and welcome to the very Christmassy special edition of the Shatton Times podcast. And I'm joined by Roseanne Watt. Hi, Roseanne. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. And uh, I'd just like to mention to all the listeners out there that this is being filmed in the middle of the festive. <laughs> filmed. <laughs> I mean, recorded. Um, <laughs> and we're actually currently at a, at a, we met up at a do, but we always plan to record this. Mm-hmm. But just in the spirit of your time, this is on the hoof. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. No, I think okay. that's fine. <laughs> and Roseanne, could you please introduce yourself to listeners? Yes, um, well, I'm Roseanne Watt. I am from Sandwick, and uh, I'm currently at Edinburgh. Well, I live in Edinburgh, uh, doing a PhD at Stirling University, so it's kind of confusing. <laughs> and your PhD is in? Um, it's in filmmaking and creative writing, specifically around Shetland literature, and, uh, yeah, kind of looking at how... Our literary tradition is formed. I don't know. <laughs> it's really interesting, and I actually want to say new to listeners <clears throat> that I am planning to speak to Rosanna specifically <laughs> about this in future. So I would like to do, uh, especially about your PhD, and also the fact, congratulations, you're nominated for one of your poems. Oh, yes, thank you. What was the nomin- What was that It was for prize? the Aesthetica uh, Creative Writing Award, so yeah, it was... It was a shock. <laughs> Which poem was that? It was The Moth Trap. I wrote it on a, a artist in residency in uh, Dumfries and Galloway like a year ago. Um, and yeah, I just kind of entered it into Aesthetica and forgot about it and then it was suddenly shortlisted. So that was good. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, Thank I'd love you. to <laughs> speak to you about your poetry and filmmaking. But because it's your time... I'm going to speak to you about you. Um, as yeah. I, I mentioned last week when I was speaking to actual Sandy, which is exciting, I mentioned last week that I was getting gifts. We have a group of friends and we do Secret Santi every year and it's genuinely a secret who your Santi is. And this year I kept getting this amazing treasure, like it was like a treasure hunt <laughs> of gifts, which would always be a letter and the gift would coincide with the letter as to a Shetland holy night or the Helly Nicht. The Hellenicht. And so the card would explain which Hellenicht we were on that night and um, the gift would coincide with that. So whether it was um, a night when you have to wash yourself in the burning embers of the fire <laughs> to protect yourself from trials. <laughs> and the gift was a peat. So, <laughs> so peat in your stocking is not a bad thing. So it, be, it turned out, Rosanne, you and my secret yeah, Santi. I'm not, I'm not a well-kept secret. <laughs> But yeah, um, I just want to do a few disclaimers here. I'm not actually a historian. I don't know much about like the origins of any of this stuff, but I am a nerd and I did read a lot about the Shetland folklore in the run-up to all this. So yeah, I kind of know about it. <laughs> yeah, so this podcast tonight is going to be really focused on the traditions of Shetland Yule that we have both read about and you've taught me a bit through the mm-hmm. Secret Santi escapades. And it, it's quite nice that this year you led me on this journey because I have the book, um, the, what is it, The Folklore of Shetland and Orkney? Yeah, by Ernest Marwick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have your book and I lent it to a friend, but I wanted it back before Christmas because I wanted to know what I needed to do in old Shetland ways to prepare for mm-hmm. Yule. And I didn't need it because... <laughs> Because you got Every me. Every Hellenicht, I got a card from you. So it would be really fun for the listeners to actually talk through the different Hellenichts that come up before Shetland yeah. and the different things you do for it. And also the crazy ways in which <laughs> I would suddenly come across an uh, envelope and a parcel on my belongings oh or not on my yeah. game that had come from you. That was so elaborate, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> Um, so if we go back to the first Hellenicht. Yeah, so that's the 13th of December. Also, oh, a disclaimer about dates is that uh, this is going by the Georgian calendar, which is the new calendar. The, the dates would be completely different by the old calendar. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Old Yule, which is on the 5th of December, yeah. apart from in Fula, <laughs> where they decided not to uh, observe a, a leap year. So I think they do it on the 6th. But everywhere else does it on the fifth. Oh, is that why they don't say? Because think. I was saying to Dad, Christmas is on the fifth, and Dad said, "I think," and I might be wrong. Disclaimer: I might be wrong. <laughs> but I think Dad said, "Fool is on the sixth. Yeah. So uh, actually, in Sallyville, where me and my family were having Christmas on the sixth. I see. Because my sister was away for actual for well. Georgian Christmas. <laughs> so because they come back new, we're actually going to have we're Christmas oh, on the 6th. See? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think that it's because of a leap year that they 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 just decided to ignore, as as people do. And uh, 
so they now celebrate it on the 6th and I think their New Year is a bit later as well. Is it um, the 12th? I think so, yeah. Because we used to have dances on the 12th. So, to the anyway, first day. <laughs> the so first the, day. <laughs> what is the background of the Holy Nights? Because I read that, I'm asking you in the natural <laughs> version, I read that Shetland, Shetland traditionally followed the kind of Norwegian pattern, which is a, like a 24-day festive yeah. period. Again, I, I don't know that much about but, it, but I the way I came to all this was I was wandering around the museum and I came across the... Heli nights and uh, there was like the calendar customs and they were they mentioned these heli nights and there was nothing else about them. Um, and what was that in the museum? It's uh, I think it's by the Trewi now. Okay, because that's, like, that's my favorite part of the whole museum, <laughs> the folklore bit. Yeah, I, I think it's around that bit. Um, and yeah, it kind of like was telling all the calendar customs and then there was these like the summer festivals and the winter festivals and. Uh, I was also doing some research for a story um, called uh, for the Between Islands project, and I got to go to the museum ar- and archives and look in their oral history section. And I was looking up like kind of guising traditions because there was a skeckler in my story, and uh, I came across. Oh, this for listeners, because we get listeners from all over the world. Oh, okay. What a skeckler is. Skeckler. So, and what a geyser is as well. Geyser. Just quick context. Okay. Uh, maybe you would be better to explain I, what I a can, geyser is. A, a geyser is basically a person in disguise. And the belief is that it dates back to the, the belief that the Norse gods would like to come to humans' parties. So what they do is they disguise their form. So say it's Thor. He disguises form into kind of a, a human form and enter a party. So the belief is if you get someone to your door in costume, you have to let them into your house and offer them drink and food. And they won't speak and you have to guess who it is. So nowadays you'll like put on fancy dress and go along your neighbour's house and they'll get you in and sit down in the kitchen and give you a drink and then guess a glory, Jimmy the Rod side or such and such until they guess you. But yeah, so it's basically being in disguise and you can do it at houses or weddings yeah. or parties, any kind of fun event. Yeah, and it's kind of or like... Or in a car park outside work, which I'll <laughs> hear more we'll about later. We'll get So yeah, it's basically disguising yourself yeah. and then and then people have to and feed and drink you for it. And never allowed to, <laughs> to uh, deny entrance to a geyser because of the fact that it could be a Norse god yeah, in imagine disguise. Saying no to, oh, yeah, imagine saying no to Loki. That's <laughs> oh, terrifying. Oh no, don't say to, no to Loki. Lota Noki. Lota Noki. <laughs> and um, how would you explain a skeckler? So a skeckler is um, an old straw costume made of oats, and it's it's very wicker man. It's kind of like they they wear um, a, a kind of straw kilt, a straw uh, kind of sh- it kind goes of tunic. Up, yeah, t- a tunic, and then they have this hat which is goes up in a big point, and it's pleated and. The main uh, skeckler, who's called the scuddler, they uh, have big ribbons going from it. Oh, there's only one has a ribbon. Yes, usually. Uh. Um, and then uh, they they cover their faces with either a handkerchief or the hat is big enough to pull completely down over their faces. And they also, when they talk, they talk like the Babadook, which is like they inhale on a breath. <laughs> Like yeah. This. yeah. Oh, that's terrifying. terrifying. <laughs> yeah, because geysers, if they do speak, of speaking a funny voice. Yeah. But every time I met a geyser until this year, they don't say a single word. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> had to. Yeah. <laughs> well. So, so basically, both are forms of disguising yourself. Yes. As part of a festive yes. celebration. Anyway, we've gone on a tangent. Um. So yeah, and uh, <laughs> I was uh, at the museum. <laughs> at, the, at the museum, researching all this, and I came across this. Uh, um, old Yal man talking about the Heli Knights of Yule and he was saying there are eight Heli Knights of Yule and uh, he went through all of them and then he said this really creepy rhyme which we'll get to for Tamismas Night and so that's how I kind of got onto it and I was like okay there has to be like we ha- there has to be knowledge left over about what you actually do on these nights and I looked in all the like old folklore books and kind of managed to get enough information to stick them all together and kind of guess at what the dates would be because the dates have long been forgotten but there are clues to when they might be um so like jesse saxby writes about uh uh one of the nights occurring like seven nights before yule tamismas night is known to be five nights before yule so 
And that's usually... Well, yeah. I thought, is Thomas was also the shortest day? Yes, it's also the shortest yeah. day. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of, like, how I, I got it all together. And the, uh, from a, an amazing website called Orknichar, I think, um, they have this amazing database of, like, old folklore stuff for Orkney and Shetland. And as I was doing this all for you, it got taken down off the web. Oh, no. So it's not there anymore. That's such a shame. I know, and uh, very much a shame for me, because I was, like, what, trying to remind myself about the traditions, and I couldn't find them anywhere. So I was just like, OK, let's see what I can remember about this. So, yeah, hopefully it'll come back online, but at the moment it's not online. Maybe they've just not paid their yearly... Yeah, there's a big server <laughs> error at the moment, but there's just, like, when it... it like, it was there until... Hellier's night, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, what's the rhyme for Hellier's night?" And I had written it down in a notebook somewhere, but I went to go online. And Is that the, the Mary blessing? Yes, yeah. Oh, I've got a good story when we get to that. Oh, okay, great. So, so let's we'll start go to the with the first night on the thirteenth of December, which is uh, Saint Magnus's night, known in Shetland as Monsmas night. Monsmas, yeah. Um, and that is also coincides with St. Lucy's night. So St. Lucy is uh, the patron saint of light. So a lot of the uh, traditions on that night seem to be around candlelight and the return of light. Um, also because the 13th of December used to be the shortest day. That was considered the, the winter solstice. So yeah, a lot of the traditions come around with light. It's monstrous question, St. Magnus. Yes, St. Magnus. Is that the St. Magnus, St. Magnus Cathedral, yeah, in Cathedral, not Cathedral. Me. Yeah, ah. so there's like a, it's very much celebrated in Orkney and it's kind of been forgotten in Shetland, so yeah. I think in uh, Orkney they actually have a, a night for St. Magnus and it's something to do with like the relics of St. Magnus. Is, ah. They do something with them. <laughs> so from <laughs> my <don't> <laughs> perspective, this is when it all started for me, but I was at my work and I didn't know if many people knew I'd even started my new job. <laughs> And then a card and a parcel appeared. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, that's nice. Someone in the office is quick on the mark. And it was the Secret Santi. And it said, basically, these are the eight Halley nights you'll expect something every night. And here's a candle to burn for tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that was uh, the journey begins. Um, and after that is... Uh, is it 13th? Oh, no, that's 13th. No, that 13th, the 18th, the 18th is uh, Tullius' night. Oh, it's a fun one. <laughs> Tullius' night is uh, when the trows come out. Um, the, I think the quote is something like, they were permitted, if they so pleased, to leave their underground dwellings and live amongst men. So it's, yeah, it's a night where you take precautions against the trows and do a lot of rituals against the trows. Um, and some of these I'd had before. Like, I think a really common a really common one <laughs> is the tully above the door, which is you put a steel blade above yes. your front door because you can't lock your door against the trow. Yes. If you lock your house door and they find it locked, you might be cursed in your house. Yes. But you leave it open, but then you start them from crossing the threshold of steel. Yes, steel, or, um, because steel contains iron, and like I think iron is the thing that they, they seem to hate. I don't know why, but they do. Um, it's, it might be a, like... <coughs> A, a thing like to do with Picts and Vikings, I don't uh, know. There's a very famous story about a man walking home one night and as he's walking in the dark he saw these eyes around him and the eyes encroaching oh. and encroaching and encroaching. It's about these three foot high grey skinned red eyed beings and they got closer and closer and he panicked and he felt about his breast pockets and his jacket and he found a pair of shears, a pair of scissors. So he just kind of like he basically drew in the earth around him a circle oh, wow. and they couldn't cross that circle. So basically, he had to keep drawing concentric like circles. Oh like, what's that called? A Venn diagram. Yeah. He had to keep drawing <laughs> more circles, and like they'd step back when he drew another. The Venn diagram of keeping shears. Yeah, away from he you. basically made it back to the house with his pair of shears. That's amazing. I have not heard that one before. Oh. And a smart one. So yeah, tell you, Zine, you do different. Yeah, different things. I cannot really mind all oh, of them. Oh, you get uh, two bits of straw <laughs> oh, before yes. sundown and you make them as a cross in front of your house. Yes. And you pluck a hair from every beast in your yes. house and buyers. Yes, and that's it, them yeah. together. Do you smoke mm. it? I think you might burn it and smoke I it. I can't mind. You take a, a low and peat, like a smoke and peat, and oh, take yeah. it from the buyers. A, a low and brand. It. Yeah, a low and brand. <laughs> So basically, it's protecting your household as the trows come back to yeah, the Yeah, it's and it's se seinen is the dialect for it, where you make the sign of the cross and kind of just bless your house and try and keep the trows away. So yeah, that's the when it all begins is like Tullia's night is like the kind of official 
official night of like the trows are coming out and this is when the trows have the most power over the uh over the realm of men so yeah that was it and that's then, a good one <laughs> and then the next night is it the following night well, the following night is Helia's night which is also known as Tullius night um oh is it Tullius Eden and then Tullius night yeah Tullius Eden and Tullius so night it's sorry confusing. sometimes yeah. it's the evening and sometimes it's the night yeah. is that what it means Eden yes, and night yes evening, evening and night yeah okay <laughs> Um, and so yeah, Helia's night it's is on the nineteenth. On the nineteenth, and it's um, uh, the night that uh, the children of the household are, are put under the care of Midder Mary, or maybe another older mother who I'm sure Mary Elaine could speak a lot about. See Midder, <laughs> yeah. our oldest god. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she, there's a shrine. I we could we don't have the rhyme on us, but it's it's something like Mid and Mary had the hand over the children or over the land. Yeah. It goes on and it's um it's just like she does that and she also uh it's like the oldest uh, female of the household does that uh chants that over all the children in the household and then the oldest man tends to the peats in the fire, um, but they don't really remember what he says or does but Oh, yeah. I wonder because I'm gonna to have to ask my dad because so when I got this card, um, Tullyazine card I should quickly say mm-hmm. so the card that came the night before, appeared in my handbag after a night out <laughs> when I'd been to some parties and on the Sunday morning I find a bag a card and a broken up bit of Christmas chocolate in my bag <laughs> so I was like oh and then for um what's this we're on now Tullyazine Hellyazine Hellyazine so for Hellyazine I went to my the hustle for Shelton Comedy and was waiting for me there and um, I read the card out to my dad and I read it the Mother Mary poem and dad went really quiet and dad said I last heard that over 50 years ago oh my God, and my really? dad remembers his granny saying it to them oh, wow. at Yule time he said she would say it again and again and again at Yule time oh that's amazing so I need to ask him if he remembers what, what the, the what the man says that yeah, would be so because important. dad said I've heard that many times before but not for years since that's amazing oh my god so it's within living memory yeah, that this was that was still happening so that's bringing amazing. it back yeah <laughs> um, and there's also the special oh, meal the special of meal of, <laughs> of oat so in every book I read it said this a special meal of oat and milk <laughs> of hot hot oats and milk it's like that's just porridge isn't it <laughs> but I had to put it as special meal of hot oats and milk <laughs> um, and I decided like I couldn't really find out why it was special so I just decided to interpret it as the pity shop special hot chocolate version of the word special so yeah I gave you a lot of chocolate to go with your your uh, meal of hot oats and milk <laughs> and everyone in the household has to eat it and I actually got home really late I got home about half eleven or I got home about eleven that night ate a huge plate of tatty mac and beans and then I opened the parcel and I <laughs> I was stab at food like I was absolutely <laughs> full of food and I was like I have to eat these oats and milk <laughs> Oh my god, no. <laughs> So I ate that too, and I was like, I can sleep myself oh, well. No. I'd done the right thing. <laughs> yes, no, you are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everyone eats in the household to be blessed. Yeah. And then the next night? The next night is... Um, Tamas Masin, Tamas Mas, yeah, which is the best one. So it starts on the 20th. Yes, yeah, yeah. So Tamas Mas is the most holy night, and it's um, the one where no work is allowed to be done from sunset on the 20th until sunrise on the 22nd. So it kind of... It's to make sure that nobody does any work on the shortest day uh, by the Georgian calendar and um, so it's yeah it's just it's amazing because it's like first of all you don't do any work you're not allowed to do any work because it's like, it breaks Tamismas day uh, Tamismas night sorry and then <laughs> the other thing is that you're supposed to have all your work prepared and finished by then and that includes the brewing of the sacred ale <laughs> which Come on, like, what else are you going to do on Thomas' night once you've finished brewing your ale? You have to drink the ale. Yeah. So I was speaking to Morris Henderson about this, and because he was talking about making this old Shetland drink, and he's like, oh, we could make that. And I would like to invite our Shetlanders listening to this, and everyone around the world, but especially... In Shetland, especially, I think we should observe Thomas next year. I think so. <laughs> I believe we should all ask for the 21st off, because it is... The, the most sacred, night, yes. yeah, the most holiest of the holy, holy nights. So I think um, next year I'm definitely going to 
It's probably going to be Sunday, so we have it <laughs> off anyway. But I'm definitely going to apply for it off and actually observe the shortest day. Yeah. No, I think it's it's fantastic. And it's, yeah, it's, again, it's, like, reminds you to rest when, like... Yeah. And, like... Especially on the shortest day. On the shortest day, which is, like, a special day anyway. So, yeah, I completely agree. I would love to see it. Um, and vitalized. <laughs> this incorporates the last several Hellenics, because it's 21st... 20th, 21st, Biana Sunday, which we got on to second, and Yule Eve and actual Yule. Yeah. But all these, for the listeners, partals arrived at the same time for me <laughs> because I left work one night after five and it was dark and I was like, go to my car because I was cold. And then there's a geyser in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And so a, a person dressed as like an old woman, like an old body, like a... Like a mask on and gloves and a big skirt and I think a headscarf, I can't really remember, holding yeah. a big bag. And um, what we said earlier on is you always have to be polite to guys and you invite them in, you give them food and drink. And I wasn't because I was so shocked. <laughs> like, I don't think I was rude. <laughs> I, I, basically, the guys are said in a disguised voice, are you Mario Lane? <laughs> and I, I said, yes. <laughs> And then basically the guys gave me this big bag of parcels that we have a price limit for our Secret Santi. So I was like, that's far too much. So when I found out it was for me, I just looked at them and shouted, oh my gosh, in their face, in, those, in that exact voice. And the guys had just ran away. <laughs> Don't know if you have anything to add to that. I have so much to add to it. Oh my God. So I knew that you were going to be going last and I would not be able to deliver any more of my gifts to you. So I had to arrange to have them all ready by Tamismas night. And it wasn't me who was the geyser. It wasn't no, you. It was my sister. Oh my god! <laughs> so, because I was worried that like I was trying, still trying to keep up this whole facade that you didn't know who was your secret Santa, even though it was kind of obvious who it was. Um, and so I was like, Jenny, Jenny, I need your help. I need you to help me deliver these gifts. And so she, we got. I was like, I have this idea that maybe we can be like get a geyser to go to Mary Lane's work and then she'll like so so we'll go we'll, she'll go to the work and deliver the gifts and um then I realised Mary Lane works quite an important place yeah there's like security yeah. and stuff so it's like there's no way that they would let us in so we'll have to wait outside and then we got the costume ready and Jenny came through wearing it and first of all the dog was just like growling and like ah, what is that and so I was like oh my god there's no way that we're not going to like actually traumatise Mary Elaine with this costume <laughs> but it's all we have so let's just do it and so we went and then um, we were waiting for Mary Elaine to come out of her <laughs> work into the car park and then accost her uh, and uh I put the gifts in the back seat and I was hiding under a jacket in case Marilyn saw me with the dog in the back of the seat. Then when Jenny went to go and get you and like give you the gift, she forgot to close the door behind her and then the dog was like wanting to go out after her. So I like had to grab onto the dog and I was really worried that you would look over and see this like phantom pair of hands holding on to this dog from this Berlingo and then I was like and also I was terrified that you were just going to run away from her and then when I heard this like kind of muffled conversation and then I heard this going oh my gosh and I was like okay she's just run away that's it it's over with and she's not got her presence we scared her too much <laughs> It was all fine in the end, but it did not sound like that from my end. <laughs> I just, because, <clears throat> so as Jenny was the guy, so she ran away. Yeah. And I was, as soon as she ran away, I was like, oh, I did not say thank you to you guys. <laughs> I am cursed. <laughs> I was rude to a geyser, but I was just so overcome with how much it was. Uh, um, but I was also really excited, and I walked to my car just saying, oh my gosh, again, but laughing at the same time. So if anyone saw me, they would have... Uh, <laughs> that's something uh, I thought was you, but... Uh, no, it never. was... I had to, I had to get a an accomplice and also Jenny dressed as a skeckler in one of my films yes. so she's a she's like well practiced guys how her. she didn't laugh I don't know <laughs> she's so into it <laughs> so that's so how yeah, the thank you Jenny thank you <laughs> thank you so that was it so we've done Tamismas 
So there's three days left. Okay, yeah. So there is the the um next ones both coincide on the same day because uh the next one is Bianis Sunday, and that always happens uh seven days before. Oh no, not seven days. Sorry, the Sunday before uh Yule, um and Bianis Sunday is just so insane. <laughs> like it's so metal. Um, oh yes. <laughs> Oh, my necklace on, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, the night where... Um, because a lot of this is... Like, the reason for all of these traditions has been forgotten. This just seems really weird. But basically, they would boil um, a, a bull's head and then um, eat, eat the head and then clean it out, keep the skull, and uh, that would be put aside for use on Yule Day. But um, and then on Yule Eve, that was again a bit like um, all of the Tullyazine stuff. It was taking precautions against trows and uh, as you say, the the peat situation. Yes, uh, I did. I even did it. Did you? Yeah, I did oh my it. god! I didn't realize. <laughs> that was what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took three living embers. Three living embers? Yeah, in a metal pan to the shower. We need to explain that. (laughs) Sorry. I keep leaning in and laughing. Um, Yeah, so the... um, Again, more precautions against the trousers. The the whole thing with the... um, the dagger against the door and then there's this uh you need to clean the house because the trows hate to see any kind of mess and then to stop the trows taking the power of your feet and hands you have to wash yourself entirely with water that has had three living embers put inside it um however that that is <laughs> like you achieve that some people put in bath water some people just have it in the sink um and uh, I just had three bits of peat from the fire and I took up into the shower and when it was like cool enough from the shower water I just like rubbed it all over myself <laughs> but then I just like had peat milk all over myself in the shower I had to spend ages scrubbing the shower before I, I, like because the shower looked terrible seemed, afterwards I thought it seemed really weird because it's like they want you to be really clean but you have to put peat all over yourself a funny another funny <laughs> part of this was um in the parcel was a new pair of socks because it said you have to yeah. clean yourself tie your shoes somewhere clean clays so um and clean a new clays so i um i cleaned the house like you said i had the shower <laughs> and i put on the new socks that you gave me thank you and i was like what other clean clays do i have that are also kind of new and i had this lovely knitted fairies jumper and this clean pretty skirt oh, wow. so i quickly put everything on got to my parents' house and I walked into the door and everyone laughed at me because <laughs> my fairies knitted jumper plus my little skirt plus my hat with the bobble plus the socks she gave me I looked exactly like Santi's elf <laughs> like it was uncanny oh my I looked just like a Christmas elf because the way the jumper's knitted with bells on it it has bells on it and they all thought I'd done it on purpose but I was just going for the only clean clays I had that's amazing <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, that's Yule. That's Yule's Eve. In sorry. Oh, so the last one is actual Yule. Actual Yule. Um, so yeah, that's when the 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 skull from Bianca Sunday comes out again, and you uh, put a candle in its eye socket and carry it throughout all the outhouses, and uh, all the animals get extra feed. Um, and uh, you gave the cat extra food. Did you? Oh great! <laughs> um, also, there's one tradition I can't before this. Oh yeah. And it's I always I always go out on Yule on Christmas Day, and I always go out before the sun's up, and I play the day dawn the outside. The day dawn, yeah. And I walk if I had a neighbour within walking distance because a shower of rain came on, so <laughs> I got up the road and played at the old ruined house next door and then oh, went back nice. in again. Oh, yeah, because that's yeah, my favourite one, is the, the day dawn. Fiddlers would get up before sunrise and go play the day dawn, and there's actually, like, an old laird who, like, paid his the rent for his... for a guy for the entire time he was on his land, just so... just because he was a fiddler and he promised to play the day dawn for him every Yule. So, yeah, that's... Um, that's another tradition. And the other thing is that all the bairns in the household would, uh, throughout the year, gather all the leftover bits of candle and uh, they would bring them out on Yule morning and everyone would eat their breakfast by candlelight um, in this like massive display of light. And that's kind of something I love about the whole traditions throughout the whole of uh, 
the whole Helly Nights is that it always returns to this idea of the light returning and that uh, candlelit breakfast is kind of like the culmination of all of it. It's so beautiful, an idea. So yeah, that's kind of the, the, the Yule, the Yule, Helly Nights. <laughs> the Yules as they called them. <laughs> thank you for explaining that to the listeners and thank you for um, putting me on that amazing journey. <laughs> no problem. I'm my own heritage and my own heritage <laughs> and I am going to try and encourage more people to take note of this in the future as well. It'll be good, yeah. Especially Tamismas is the day off. Oh, Tamismas, yeah. And I think it's it's good. It's not to, like, revive them, but more to, like, revitalise them in modern times as well, because it's, like, there are n- modern contexts for them. So I think, yeah, it's it's good, especially taking Tamismas night off, because we're all too busy nowadays. Yes, we are. And um, But thank you for taking time <laughs> out tonight to speak to us. <laughs> no this is problem. Roseanne Watt explaining about history, and I would love to speak Again, to you in the future. not a historian. <laughs> don't, don't take my word as gospel. <laughs> but thank you for listening, and um, all the best for the new year when it comes, listeners. All the best to you too. Thank you. Um, you for the too, new year. Th- but uh, again, if you sub- celebrate Old New Year Day, that's not till the twelfth. So you've got another <laughs> couple of podcasts yes. to go. <laughs> <Yeah. that> <laughs> but thank you. Good night. <laughs>